we have to cross from the north niger to algeria there is a uh, desert called uh, sahara and it's like one of the biggest over there we have those people that are gonna help us pass you know like toyota tacoma mm -hmm. 25 of you guys in the back yeah, 25 people in a toyota tacoma yeah plus your luggage so wow and you have to grab the truck so hard so you get crammed mm. and then but when you get crammed you can't let him go because if you let him go you fall and that's it they right. won't stop oh man you know there was a girl with a baby but at some point she she couldn't do it anymore she just wanted to throw a baby away oh my like God. this how hard it was like she couldn't do it and you can't blame her my journey from Cameroon to uh, Paris was uh, 14 months. 14 months to get there? I couldn't go to the airport and just take a plane to go to right. France, you know. So how'd you I have get there? to use all the back doors. <laughs> 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 when we get to the, this country, the first country in the south of uh, Algeria, we found, we found a water well. And this waterway was there for, for I don't know how long. I think it was something that was being used by the farmer. And he was so dirty with death animal in the bird, everything. Man, it's on I gonna drain this water and he might he might kill me. But guess what? I will die after if I don't drain this water. I'm not lasting long. So you drink it. <laughs> so you drink it. You kind of like take the water, put it in the bottle, leave your shirt, and make use your filter. shirt as a filter. Mm -hmm. Drink the water. Oh man. Try not to feel this, to smell it, not to do anything. You have to. You have to. At every step, you think the next step gonna be easier. Guess what? You always get harder and harder and harder. That's how it. So you get tied and tied and tied and tied and at some point you find yourself in the middle of something that you never imagined but you can turn around, you can go back in. And still this is only, you're talking about a 14th month, 14 month journey and we're only a few weeks in. Yeah. Jeez. Because, and it, yes. So it are, just keeps going. That was just like a warm up. <laughs> oh hell yeah oh my god Francis Ngannou arguably the most dangerous man in the world when it comes to combat sports out of the 8 billion people on the planet there is perhaps not a single one of them that could beat him in a fair fight with the ability to throw a punch that has the same amount of horsepower as a family car, he never fails to remain humble, calm and stoic, keeping his ego under control even when facing off with opponents that have given him non-stop verbal abuse for months leading up to a fight, never failing to show respect to even his worst enemy. When doubted by nearly everyone leading up to his most recent fight with Tyson Fury, Criticised for only being a power puncher and not a boxer, having only fought MMA and never a professional boxing match. You can see why people did doubt him, as he entered the ring with the current greatest heavyweight boxer alive for his boxing debut. Whether or not he considers himself a stoic, he displays multiple characteristics of the most profound stoics across history, making him one himself. I don't, I try not to put pressure on me, on me, I'm like, every fight, I'm like, I'm gonna go there, do my best, make sure that I, everything that should have been done is done on my end, and the rest, I don't control it. This is an idea the ancient Greek philosopher Epictetus, who lived almost 2000 years ago, calls the dichotomy of control, being one of the most core practices in Stoicism today. It is the idea that there are two kinds of things, things that are in our control and things that are not. 
If something is not in your control, you shouldn't worry or complain about it. Because what's the point? You can't do anything about it anyway. In Nganu's case, the thing that he could not control was the amount of training Tyson Fury did to prepare, and most importantly, the judge's decision at the end of the match, as boxing has become somewhat corrupt. Whilst he can influence their decision, he does not have full control over it. Then the things you can control, you should not complain or worry about either, as you can control them. It is in your ability to alter them in whatever way you want. In this case, it was the amount he wanted to train, and how he would react to the outcome of the match. Francis clearly demonstrates this stoic principle, as he says that he's done all the preparation he could for his fights, and he will also perform at his highest level on the day. But outside of that, he sees no use in worrying. Whatever happens, happens at that point. He is not in control of it. Unfortunately, his fight with Tyson Fury ended in a split decision loss, which was highly controversial as outside of the judging panel, it is pretty unanimous that he himself should have won the fight. Whether it was corrupt boxing politics or not, Francis, in his post-fight ring interview, took the defeat graciously as a stoic would, knowing that he can't change their decision anyway, leaving no need to abandon his virtues by throwing a temper tantrum, like others may have. Robbery. It's a robbery, bro. How many jabs did he land? How many jabs did you land? You didn't get any, hardly any shots off. Huh? And you got a point off as well. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. He can land two right hands around, but I was pushing the pace. I was throwing the shots, and I was the one put working. You weren't landing. You weren't landing. You weren't landing. Right, Tom. Look at your face. Look at your eyes. Huh? Look at you. Look at you. He's a pro boxer. One thing you can take I mean, away from this is that you did yourself proud, my friend, and you will get the rematch, and you'll no, win the rematch. Just, do you want that I rematch? I don't. I don't. Ultimately, even though Tommy Fury won it, it was a loss because he said he was going to knock out. Control it, control it, KSI, come on. Despite Francis believing he should have won, his post-fight interview went like this instead. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling great. I feel fantastic. And um, I'm very happy. It didn't go my way, but, you know, I want to um, thank Riyadh Season and um, Your Excellency, um, Mr... Turkey Al Sheikh, right here, the Kingdom of uh, Saudi Arabia, for giving me this opportunity to prove people wrong one more time again. Great experience. I, I mean, I'm not giving any excuse. I know uh, I come out short, but I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back and work harder uh, with little more experience this time, little more feeling of the game, and uh, come back even stronger. Expressing his gratitude for the opportunity that Tyson Fury gave him, and showing admirable sportsmanship. Not letting arrogance steer his ego in a way that would muddy his character, despite it being a big upset that the decision was made for him to lose. Someone's virtue being the thing of highest importance to any person, according to Stoics. A principle that has remained unchanged since the start of Stoicism in 300 AD to now. In a later interview, he says that he believed he should have won, but remains calm never getting angry or annoyed, maintaining his cool, collected tone of voice. Francis has gone through a journey to the top so extreme and unlikely that it deserves to be made into a film. Enduring so much adversity trying to leave Cameroon, his birthplace, that the scale of it cannot be given sufficient justice in a single video. Being brought up with an abusive father, made to work in a sand mine for seven years, starting at the age of ten, as he had to in order to eat and afford some form of education. He often didn't even have a pen to write with during school, often leaving class early out of hunger, from lack of food that got made worse by all the manual labour he would be doing whenever he was not in school. During rain seasons in Cameroon, where conditions got so bad that many people periodically stopped working, Francis, however, would take this as an opportunity to get more work filling in for the people that were less desperate. And when he decided to try and escape Cameroon, he needed money he didn't have to be able to make the trip, forcing him to sell his bike, which was effectively his livelihood at the time, using it to work as a taxi driver, risking everything getting rid of it. Despite his lack of money, 
he made sure to give his sister part of his savings before he left on his tireless 14 month journey that entailed climbing walls that would end in him being entangled in barbed wire, crossing large bodies of water in an inflatable boat with no oars, having to swallow his money so it wouldn't get stolen, and much more. To then finally be able to arrive as an illegal immigrant in Paris with no money, food, or possessions, forcing him to sleep in a parking lot during a cold fall in 2013. However, he did not complain and never understood why Westerners would always complain about their life when it was so free and filled with opportunity. And despite being homeless, Francis described this time as one of the best moments in his life and said he was very happy to just be in Paris, have his own life and chase his dreams. He didn't mind living on the street. In fact, he said that compared to what he was used to, it was like a five-star hotel. He was able to register for some free food as he had no income, along with being able to talk his way into getting a free membership to a fighting gym at the age of 27, as the owner expressed sympathy towards him giving his situation and aspirations. This was crucial for him, as the reason he left Cameroon was to pursue his dream of becoming a boxer after watching Mike Tyson on the rare occasion he was able to access YouTube. He was used to and comfortable with an aesthetic life, like many of the Stoics before him. His purpose was in fighting, not material possessions. I can live out of nothing. You know, I live in, what, the, what I live in the street, bro. Yeah. Like, and I don't care if I walk around, you guys say, oh, champ, oh, that's the UFC contender, whatever it is. Man, I just live based off what is in my, uh, based off my asset. I don't live beyond that. Four months after training in the gym, he had his first pro fight in MMA, as he decided to make the switch from boxing, as it meant he could gain a reliable stream of income sooner. He earned two grand in this fight, which to him was a massive sum of money, later leading to a contract with the USC, allowing him to start sending money home to his family in Cameroon, as he dominated the UFC heavyweight division. Yet, even though he now earns millions with each fight he has, he hasn't let money corrupt him. Setting up the Francis Nganu Foundation, which had previously been completely personally funded by himself for six years, but has now opened it up to external funding so they can have an international impact. The foundation has improved education resources in African schools, along with opening up multiple martial art gyms in Cameroon, offering the facilities he wished he had had when he lived there as a young boy. I will leave the link to the site in the description of this video if you want to take a look. If you are enjoying the video so far, I have started a free weekly email newsletter which I have linked down below, where I write about a wider array of topics, all under the umbrella of optimizing your life. If you don't gain some kind of value or new knowledge from each newsletter I send, you can unsubscribe hassle free. Alongside the Francis Ngannou Foundation, he also negotiated for his opponents to get a minimum pay of $2 million for each fight. This way, someone that has less money than him can get proper doctors, nutritionists and trainers 24-7 like he can, allowing for a fairer fight. And at the end of the day, he says that it takes two people to make a fight happen and doesn't want to be someone that just takes all the money for himself because he is the more popular fighter. A gratitude practice used by Stoics is to imagine losing something that you otherwise take for granted, allowing you to find pleasure in the more mundane aspects of life. An example used by the modern Stoic, William Irvine, is to close your eyes for a few seconds, and then imagine yourself attempting to open your eyes again, but being unable to, and it remains like this forever, making you no longer able to see. Whilst like this, think about how upset you would feel and how much of a bad situation it will put you in. And then, open your eyes, and you will now feel relief and gratitude for the ability you have to see again. Francis Ngannou has a similar practice. He will often fly back to Cameroon to visit his family every so often. And whilst he is there, he will always go to the places he despised so much, like the sandbinds. Remembering how he hated his life so much back then, and all the terrible things he had been put through leaving him often in disbelief by how cruel the world was to him not that long ago. 
Whilst this may sound like a depressing thing to do, Francis liked to do it, to remind him of how far he has come and how many things he has to be grateful for. And how you love God for your hands and your feet and your legs and your skin and your movements and everything. Thank you, your gratitude. For your life. Yes. Your, so you know, your blessings triple when you have gratitude. This puts his current problems in perspective, seeing that they are really very small compared to what he is used to. Lifestyle champion is not too particularly um, kind to people who are not accustomed to it. Mm. You know, it's all about sacrifice. Sex, food, liquor, friends. And that's a good thing about me. I don't have any problem with that. Also I'm a lonely person. You're cool with the loneliness, right? So it's, you don't have to worry about stamina. I grew up alone, kind of. I was very isolated. I was in so uh, such a different situation that for kids, nobody really care about me. Nobody want to be friend about or with me, stuff like that. I get to the point that even if uh, they invite me to a party, I'll be like, no, I'm cool. Francis decided to not do the things that would take him away from being a better boxer. The same way one of the earliest Stoics, by the name of Chrysippus, would spend the majority of his time writing and giving lectures about Stoicism, being known for even rejecting invitations from kings, as he thought that it would only distract him from the work that gave him meaning. The same way Francis does not feel the need to go out and party all the time, like someone else might do if they had just accumulated as much wealth as he had in such a short period of time. However, Francis, like a Stoic would, place lesser value on the external things, focusing more on internal fulfillment, which for him is martial arts. You know, how so, do you rate his power, Mike? Like, by, by you know, analyzing him. Uh, viewing the people he hit, he hits very hard. Matter of yeah. fact, you can't even ask them. I think they're still knocked out. <laughs> <laughs>